Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Monday, September 16th edition of the Basement Academy. Now, today we're going to have a second intermission, <laughs> intermission number two in our little series here on nine prayers for a new season. I want to pause and offer you a resource that has become very uh, valuable to me. And I want to tell you about that just after I read a portion of Psalm 136. This is one of those psalms that folks avoid, I think, because of its very unique structure or format. It's a call and response psalm. Other psalms are like this, but what's unique about this is in every line, the response is exactly the same. His love endures forever. So the worship leader, I'll read a, a portion of this. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And then the congregation responds, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Join me, okay? Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever the sun to govern the day. His love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand, and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. It goes on for another 20 verses or so, recounting the greatness of God in creation and in redemption through the Exodus uh, event in particular and some additional language. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. And so it's a prayer that some folks avoid because of the repetition. And yet when you read it, it just, you walk away. What do you understand? His love endures forever. Okay, <clears throat> I have three more prayers that I want to introduce to you. But before doing that, I want to take another intermission. And so I want to tell you about the current ministry of a dear friend of mine and colleague, Pete James, Pastor Pete, the Reverend Dr. Peter James, longtime pastor of Vienna Presbyterian Church, was ordained there and retired from there 42 years, I believe it was, uh, Pete's ministry at Vienna. I was in a, a covenant group, a small group with Pete and some other pastors from the first year of me, my being at Greenwich. Remember when I said last week on September 11th that there was a pastoral gathering and I was with one pastor? It was Pete James. Pete was the first one to arrive. Greenwich was hosting the small group that day. The other pastors got the news on the way and turned around, went home, uh, and got on with their day. Pete and I visited for a little bit, prayed, and then he went back and got about the, the craziness of that day in his own church and family. I love Pete. Wonderful, wonderful minister of the gospel. Dear friend, very effective leader. Um, he's now serving as the pastor in residence at Gordon-Conwell Seminary, where both he and I, we were a different, a, a generation apart, <clears throat> at Gordon Conwell Seminary up in uh, the Boston area. 
Pete, in his retirement, has uh, begun something, and it's an interesting way it came about. Similar to the Basement Academy, COVID brought this about. As I started giving daily updates, it has turned into a teaching ministry for you, the church, and perhaps for some others beyond Greenwich. So as Pete tells the story, uh, during COVID, uh, one of his cousins, who was a believer, uh, went in for surgery. And of course, as you know, because of COVID quarantine uh, protocols, was unable to have any visitors. And they were texting back and forth, and, and she gave some indication of being lonely. And so Pete, who had been at the time, been reading a prayer book of prayers of the saints of old, began to send her a daily prayer. Well, you know, that became part of their daily interaction and support. And so pastorally and in, in, in a family way, uh, Pete was supporting his cousin with these daily prayers. <clears throat> she recovers a couple weeks later, goes home. Pete stops sending prayers. And she basically says, what gives? I want the prayers. <laughs> And so he continued, well, you know, he kind of ran out at a certain point and it moved him to continue to do or, or begin to do kind of deeper research. And he has developed a ministry where daily there is a prayer that is sent out. You have to subscribe to it and I'm going to give you all the information right here. But it's a daily prayer subscription and Pete writes a short uh, meditation, often historical in nature around a particular individual who offers the prayer, and then the prayer itself. And so let me give you an example. This is from last week. Uh, Joan of Arc. Here's the reflection and then the brief prayer. Heresy was considered a capital offense in the Middle Ages. And this is Pete writing. Try as I might, I still can't wrap my head around such drastic censure. Granted, the rise of popular heretical movements had something to do with it, but it still doesn't explain why the church went overboard in silencing dissent. You likely remember the name of Joan of Arc, 1412 to 1431. Do the math, people. That's 19 years. That's me speaking. <laughs> She's the peasant teenager who had visions from God to save France from English rule. When her hometown was subsequently burned to the ground and the French city of or Orléans, I think is how it might be pronounced, Orleans, was under siege, she convinced a crown prince desperate for help to outfit her in battle armor to lead the effort to liberate Orleans and restore Charles VII as the legitimate king of France. While successful in the mission, she was eventually captured by English sympathizers and sold to England for a hefty sum. The transcript of her 1431 church trial revealed her remarkable composure in the face of overwhelming odds. Remember, this is before the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther that we looked at last Friday is 1517. This is 1431. At a pivotal moment in the trial, this spunky 19-year-old was asked, Joan, are you in a state of grace? It was a trick question, since church leaders believed no one could be completely sure of God's grace. If she answered positively, she would give evidence of heresy, and if she answered negatively, she would confirm her guilt. She faithfully avoided the trap with her prayerful response, that if she were in God's grace, God would keep her there, and if she strayed, God would restore her. One court notary at the trial later testified that her interrogators were, interrogators, I'm sorry, were stunned by her perceptive answer. <clears throat> A church tribunal ultimately found her guilty of heresy and turned her over 
to the state to be burned at the stake, only to be exonerated 25 years later. Her testimony leads us to pray, and so here's the prayer of the day. O oh Lord, if I am in your grace, keep me there. If I am not, O oh God, put me there. That is one example. Pete calls this ministry prayers from the cloud. There's a little double meaning here. Prayers from the cloud of witnesses. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Prayers from the cloud of witnesses. And then prayers from the cloud, that is kind of the internet and the cloud, right? You know, we talk about all that stuff. It is prayers from the cloud of witnesses. And so what Pete has done, and this is now we're like into his third year, I think. I do believe we, we spoke uh, several weeks ago, um, and I believe he is uh, shopping this to publishers, may actually have uh, found a publisher who will put these together as a series of de essentially like a devotional uh, book. And I think it's maybe like a three-year cycle that he's looking at putting together. So he does the research, puts the meditation together, and then the prayer. Prayers from the cloud, based on Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I want you to subscribe to this. The, 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 the address to go to, so you can then enter your email address, is prayersfromthecloud.com. I'm pointing now to the whiteboard. You can't see this if you're listening on the podcast. But just type in prayers from the cloud Pete James or prayersfromthecloud.com into your search engine. It'll pull you to the subscription page, but it also gives some of the backdrop and it has all of the prayers on it. So you could go to that page daily, but if you subscribe, it just dumps into your email box every day. Here are some of the folks in recent weeks. Some you will know these names, others you won't. Joan of Arc, whom I've just read. Alexander Crummel, or Crummel, an African-American who studies and, and becomes ordained as one of the first uh, in in history uh, in the, uh, coming out of the colonies. Padre Pio, Roman Catholic um, um, pastor. Irenaeus of Lyon or Lyon. Peter Williams, don't know Peter Williams. Thomas Cranmer, okay, I've heard of Cranmer. William Seymour, had not heard of William Seymour. Oh, I have heard of William Seymour. Conrad Hubert, never heard of Conrad Hubert. Basil of Caesarea, I've heard of Basil of Caesarea. And so, let me invite you to subscribe prayersfromthecloud.com. Pete does not get a dime from this. So there's no, there's no cost. This is free. He is a pastor who wants people to pray. He wants you to pray. <laughs> I want you to pray. Okay. So prayersfromthecloud.com. Let me offer that this will do several things. It, it will expand your praying. You will pray better if you subscribe to this, read these, make these prayers your own. It's similar to what I'm doing, nine prayers for a new season. I'm introducing to you some prayers. Some are from scripture, I, I realize. But I'm introducing to you prayers that you wouldn't have known and telling a little backstory sometimes. It will expand your praying perspective when you start to pray with Joan of Arc from the 1400s who stood firm in her faith. It will change the way you think and you pray. It will expand your praying ideas and your praying language. You will then find new words. You, you will 
phrases will come into onto your lips and they might work beyond just the morning that you say that prayer. You might remember a, a, a little snatch of a phrase from a prayer and then it enters your prayers that day or the next day. This is what praying the Psalms does for you, right? It, it begins to give you an expanded vocabulary uh, for prayer. It will expand Expand your praying awareness to realize, oh my goodness, all these people whom I've never heard of and some of whom I have heard of have been following Jesus Christ and they passionately poured out their prayers and their lives and their intercession. And you, as, as Pete does the research and you read some of the stories, the backstories of this people, you will be humbled, you will be inspired, you will be challenged. And so we'll expand your praying awareness that you are not just praying in your little room, your sunroom, you know, on a Tuesday morning, you are praying with the saints of old. And they're cheering you on and their prayers may inspire you to greater faithfulness, greater witness, a greater um, courage uh, and, and obedience to our Lord Jesus. And so to use a phrase of Eugene Peterson, it will expand your praying imagination. So many of us suffer from a lack of imagination. Our prayers, and I don't mean this to sound scoldy, please don't hear it that way. But for so many of us, when we just pray on our own, we don't use any other resources, we don't pray the Psalms, we, we, we just, when it's up to us to find a way to pray, our prayers are very narrow, thin, <laughs> short. We pray, dear God, bless me. We, we pray the same set of phrases and, and it's a, a very small set of phrases. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. That's a wonderful prayer. God hears that prayer. Yes. But wouldn't it be better to expand <laughs> the language of prayer, the understanding of prayer? And so this is, this is why we go to school. We, we, we read literature um, we, we study science and math to, to expand our understanding. And so, thank you, Pete. Just a shout out to, to, to you for your ministry, to your continued faithfulness as a pastor, uh, as a servant of Christ, and, and as an intercessor. And thank you for the ways in which you're helping so many of us uh, expand our ministry of prayer uh, and intercession. So let me invite you one more time, the commercial, <laughs> prayersfromthecloud.com. It doesn't have to have spaces between it, but if you just type in prayersforthecloud.com, I'm sure your search engine will get you there. Sign up your email, maybe other friends in your family email, and let those prayers start to shape you seven days a week. Okay, seven days a week. All right, let's close with prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for Pete. Thank you for his friendship, the collegial relationship that we have enjoyed over so many years. And thank you for his continued ministry of service to your church in this expanded way and yet quiet way. And so I pray for my friends in the Basement Academy that they would become those who pray with the cloud of witnesses. And thank you for the way in which these prayers have enriched my life. And so, Lord, use this ministry to strengthen our lives and our shared ministry together in this season that we're walking through at Greenwich. Lord, hear us now as we pray, as our Lord Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so may you run your race this day following Jesus Christ. May you run that race with perseverance, knowing that you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And may you join them in prayer and in obedience and in faithfulness this day and forevermore. Amen.